Yay Networks. Hello, everybody, and welcome to my podcast. Happy Valentine's Day to you. Listen, even if you're single today, you got to know that if your desire is to be in a relationship, that God is just preparing you for your boo thing. And sometimes I even say that you are so special. And I believe this. You are so special that God is taking extra time on your spouse that he is working on to bring into your life. And it is going to happen. So today, no matter where you are, if you're single, I know I've got lots of single people that follow me. If you're single, if you are ready to date, if you are in a relationship and maybe your marriage is not full of love like it used to, I want to encourage you today. Do something special. Do something special for your spouse. Maybe you ain't honored them or celebrated them on Valentine's Day in a long time because maybe they forgot about you and you got resentful. You, the Bible says do unto others as you would have them do unto you, as you would wish And so today, go out of your way. One of the hardest things in relationships is when you've been in this trend, right? Where y'all have grown apart or uh, maybe uh, you're fighting through infidelity or whatever uh, the situation is and you find yourself angry. Um, And and, and the hardest part is to uh, let that pride down and become all you want them to be for you. That's very hard because it's pride. And I've seen more relationships end over pride. And really they didn't need a divorce. They needed to swallow their pride. And so I can tell you, cause I've been divorced. I can tell you that there's so many things that I oftentimes think about if I would have done differently, would I be here? However, I can't go back, but I definitely got myself ready with for, for God to bring low into my life. And so what I want you to do right now, because I want to get into it because this is Valentine's Day. What I want you to do right now is I want you to go, if you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe. If you are watching this or lit, I mean, listening to this on any of the other platforms, subscribe, push that subscribe button. And every time I upload, you will get a notification. YouTube is a big place for me because I do all my prayer calls every Monday through Friday at 8 a.m. I do prayer calls right here on YouTube. Uh, My podcast is uploaded on here on Wednesdays. Uh, And you're not going to want to miss any of these podcasts because we're reinventing the podcast and you're not going to miss any of them. I want you to subscribe. And if you would, for Valentine's Day, give me some love. Give me and Lowe some love by leaving a good review of what this podcast means to you and then share it. Somebody needs hope. We're in our 50s and we found love and we didn't find each other at a church, which I know shocks y'all because I'm a pastor at Limitless Church but we found each other at a restaurant. And so we are unveiling and unpackaging all of this in these podcasts this month. And so I'm so glad you're here. Now listen, if you, I have just launched um, my, um, we've got, we've got right now, I've got the RTK inner circle that you can join by going to realtalkkim.com. Every two weeks I get in there and I teach our inner circle. We have a retreat every six months right here in Atlanta. The next one will be June 20, 21st and 22nd. All the details are on my website, realtalkkim.com. You can also get in my masterminds. That is my new coaching, which is a one-on-one coaching. It's one-on-one coaching. You have to give me a year a year of your life. You have to give me a year of your life so that we can walk through life together and get you at a place that you need to be. That the, the one-on-one coaching, the masterminds is created for your life and what you need. All right. So whatever you need, this is how many you can work. It's one-on-one. And so it's going to be an incredible year that I get to spend with you. Also, you can go join the masterclass SOAR and 24. All of this you don't have to be present for those classes. You can watch the replay by going to innercircle.realtalkkim.com. Put in your email and your password that you signed up with, and you can watch all the replays right there. Also, if you have any questions for our ministry, anything you want to ask me, rtkquestions at gmail.com. I got the best staff ever. So y'all, all of that to get to here. We're going to be right back. And I'm bringing my special Bow chicka wow wow in with me. I know y'all enjoyed last podcast. This is going to be even better. So I'll be right back. Hello, everybody, 
and welcome back to my podcast, Real Talking Podcast. I'm so excited today because I have my special gift from God that God brought me this year, Lo. But where are you, Lo? Where are you? <laughs> Look at you, baby. What your day is. Oh my gosh. Happy it's happy love day. Thank you, baby. I love it. You got me a card and candy. Y'all, I have not gotten a Valentine's in probably 12 years. Can you believe that? I don't even know if I got anything 12 years ago. Thank you so much. I love you. Yeah, baby. Look at this, y'all. Look how beautiful you and me. Y'all, look, it's got, it has got uh, wood on it. You and me, me and you, us. We sounds right no matter how you say it. Oh, yes. thank you, baby. Yes. I love it. Yo, I feel very lovey-dovey today, man. I feel super excited, though, because this is my first Valentine's Day getting to love somebody for real, man. Like I love you for real. And I make sure I tell you every day, how does it feel having, when was the last time you had a Valentine's love? Uh, it's, it's been a while. Yeah. It's been a while. It's been years, you know, and knowing that it's, it's really love. Yeah. You, know, you can just, you know, go out with someone like just cause it's Valentine's day, but you know, you really want to say, I got someone special. Yeah. I'm going to make this special day, this Valentine. That's what it's for. I, baby, I think about how just last Valentine's Day, I didn't know you. Now, we met in January, but it was just passing by. Yes. You said, my chicken wings look good. Yeah. <laughs> but who would have thunk <laughs> that within a few weeks, I was going to get to meet the man that I would call my husband. That would be my cover, my protector, my escape, not my duty. And now we get to share today. We got special plans today. We got, you got something special for me, like later? Yeah, we get to have some chicken wings. No. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So y'all, for I mean, tell baby, look in that camera right now and tell that man or that woman that is looking for their love, their happily ever after. Give them hope. I mean, if you got someone that's, whether you, you know, pursuing, you're pursuing that person. So just go all out. It's, no, but what if they ain't got nobody? Give them hope to hold on. Well, I mean, um, everybody, <laughs> everybody wants to be able to have someone. And I think that uh -huh. the, the hope that, you know what, uh, just step outside. Step outside of your comfort get zone. Get dressed up tonight, yeah, huh? Yeah, get dressed up. Step outside your, your comfort zone, you know? Get dressed yeah. up. Go outside. Yeah. You know, babe, we were uh, talking last because we got some questions that people have sent in for us. And one of the questions that we ended with last week was, let me read it again so I can get it right, so I can make sure I say it right. Um, this person said... Um, she said, I've been told that I look like I'm already taken or married and that's why I'm not being approached by men. I take it as a compliment that I look like a wife, but I'm single and ready for a relationship. What do I do now? The way I came at it was maybe it's because you got walls, you know, maybe you, you are inviting, mm -hmm. maybe you are, uh, 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 walking around feeling like, you know, maybe you, maybe you feel like. You you don't you're not you, you're not married because you're not the best. That's how I took it. So I was like, get flirty, get fun, fix yourself up, go out, put yourself out in restaurants because your spouse is not going to break in your house to get you. But when we closed the podcast, um, our producer Manson and we, and you, we were all sitting around talking, and Manson said it's not so bad right. because. Looking like a wife's a good thing. Right. He said, but a lot of times the reason that they're not being, and here's another angle for you, and it was like a wake-up call for me. Maybe the reason why you are, people say you look like a wife is because you're so beautiful that they can't, nobody can believe that you would still be single. Right. And so what do you do? You flirt. If you are so beautiful and still single, and I thought that made a lot of sense to me. Like the reason why 
maybe you look like a wife is because you just look so perfect, so beautiful that nobody can believe that you would be single. So what would you tell that beautiful person that is still single? Because I know me and you got a lot of beautiful women, friends, and good looking men that are still single. What would you tell them? I mean, just stay, you know, you stay charming, you know, as a, as a female or a male. I mean, you still, as a, you know, you still use your charm. And I think a lot of times that we kind of have our defense. We have so much up when someone approach you, or, you know, are you approachable? Yeah. Are you approachable? Yeah. Yeah. I are mean, you approachable? Yeah. Are you approachable? And I think for me, I wasn't. Yeah. You know what? I think it was you that told me that when women go out to eat yeah. in groups, that there's, what did you tell me? <laughs> you hanging with five, four or five women. No one's going to talk. No, no guy serious coming up, you know. Because he's afraid. Because he, he's serious. He's a serious guy. Yeah. He don't want to. He don't want to make himself look bad. But if you was by yourself, yeah, having dinner, I don't care where you at. I guarantee you that that guy will come up and approach you. How are you? Or are you by yourself? Uh, will you mind? I join you. You know, I can. You know, I can tell you how it would happen. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Which made a perfect sense to me yeah. because whenever I mean I was out to eat with my brother and his wife, yeah. like I was at third wheel, and that's how you and I connected. <laughs> and if I would have been out with a whole bunch of women, yeah, you, yeah. You, I mean, and we're in Atlanta now. Think about it. <laughs> you get five women over here, and one guy come here, and he go came here, and they they already ordered all these lobsters and steaks. So what you think next after? Girl, he ain't even pay the bill. He ain't even asked to pay yours. He ain't even buy you nothing. Because that's what hater women do. Women that yeah. are haters. We're we talking very independent women will still want this guy to just just because he say hello and he came in there with five of them and they're going to jump on him like a pigeon because they think they're eagles. Eagles, well, guess what? You already, <laughs> and they're you just never jealous because you're the one getting hit on. So they're now yeah. they're becoming man hater. Right. I get that. Pigeons don't fly with eagles. Yeah. No. I, I love that. Here's another one, baby. Yeah. How do I navigate? Oh, wait, wait. It says, what kind of advice would you give me? Nope. That was, we, we already answered that. No, no, no. This is a new one. What kind of advice would you give me as a wife of 16 years who has within the last year rededicated her life back to God and is on fire for God? But my husband does not want to go to church. He was church hurt about 10 years ago and thinks he doesn't need God. So here, here, let me start that one. I want, can I start? Yeah, go, go ahead. I want to start that. I, I feel like that so often we are taught, taught that men should uh, be the, the, the leader of our home and pray for us and all those things. I've seen more women come to know Jesus and literally like almost want to divorce their husband because their husband didn't fall in love with Jesus like they did. Right. And so even with you and I, you went to church, but I'm a pastor. Right. And so I had to allow you, you, you didn't come to church when we first started dating ever. Right. You'd come every, maybe once every three or four months, but you watched every Sunday uh, on, on YouTube. But I allowed you to grow at your pace. Right? right. And so this woman is basically saying, I've come to know Jesus and he, he, he has it. What would you tell that woman that now has become going to church every Sunday and loving Jesus, but her husband ain't that into it? What would you tell her? Well, I mean, I mean, first of all, we say church hurt. I mean, you ever seen your home church broke? Because this is what you're doing. You're breaking up your home because this, nah. this is everything is there is no church hurt. We need to stop saying that is love in the church, love your neighbor. That's what we grow up on. So when we talk, we keep saying church hurt. Let's just kind of like, you know, sometimes the man need to, man should, a man should follow his wife to church if you can't lead her to a church that you would like for her to go to and your family. That's why. Y'all go to church together. Go to church together. Yeah. No somebody matter. said that the other yeah, day. That they quit together. going to church together. And I said, you get back in that church yeah, with your husband. Yeah. Because I don't care if you don't like right. the worship team. Right. You need to be at that church together because that is where the enemy comes to still right. kill and destroy us. He'll get in there and start. That's why it's so beautiful. So he's coming from the standpoint point of a man. Right. You're saying, man, get to church with your wife. Get to church. Because it's an hour on Sundays. I'm saying if your husband ain't where you are yet, 
Yeah. Stop throwing your husband out because he's not as holy roller as you already. And right. show the love of Jesus to him. Right. Like when you come home from church, make him his favorite meal that Sunday. Yeah. Like let him see that church is changing you. And when he sees that church and God is changing you, he's going to be like, man, I want to go to church with you because look look how great you are. I mean, we do a lot with, with the church for guys that's in the church. I mean, we got, you know, we got television and we got... TV's on with football because God knows I love football. Limitless, foot yeah. Yeah, God knows I love football. <laughs> and we had uh, pizza, wings, yeah, and we everything. Had we had the game on. So, I mean, it, it enticed you to do this. Yeah. I mean. But, but, but at Limitless, we're very right. family-oriented. Yeah. Like, we, we're relationship-driven. And it's really changed a lot since you've come to my life because we are a couple. You know, it's it's – it's different when you're a pastor, right. a woman, and you're single. And so I've noticed that even now that you are in my life, things are just so, just so cool. It's yeah. just like that the place, the pieces are falling in the right place. Yeah. I got a good idea. Just RSVP, Real Talk Kim, and we'll have a reservation for you and have a seat for you, you and your wife and your family. So yeah, I love that. We're it. implementing a lot yeah. of this stuff. Yeah, well, I've solved that already. Yeah. <laughs> We we don't have we don't have a, a church hurt. I love that. Yeah, Here's no another one. Hurt. When was the moment you knew you were falling in love? And what was it about him that was this realization about him that hit you like a ton of bricks? So I'm going to answer that. Mm -hmm. I knew I was falling in love probably about the same as you. We 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 started falling in love, but I'm a relationship person. Yeah. I when I met you, I knew within the first month. And the way I knew I was falling in love with you was I, we had a situation and uh, my old side came out yeah. and you came to me and sat down and you were so quiet and so calm. Um, you said, I'm not leaving you, but I need you to fix this. I need you to go to your prayer closet and fix this. And that was like the seal for me because I was like, dude, man, this man is different. Like you loved me so much. And then another thing that made me really know that I was falling in love with you was I wanted to go to this restaurant that was kind of loud and uh, dancing was going on. And I'm just thinking I can I can go. And I remember you looked at me and you said, you're a pastor. You, you can't you can't go to those places. And I started seeing that you cared about me and you cared about the call of God on my life more than any. I, I've dated preachers. I was married to them, right? And none of them had that righteous, that 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 heart, where you cared so much about me, right? That you were like, "No, we ain't going there." So I knew I was falling in love in that first month, right? Yeah. When I mean, did you know you were falling in love? Well, you know, like I say, if I give you an analogy, if I'm discreet, I don't I don't need to bring you in the street. Yeah, I'm gonna keep you in the church. Yeah. Yeah. So you keep your wife out of the streets and out of different situation. That way we will never have these conversations. Yeah. And then that's why- You just I, don't put yourself yeah, in situations yeah, you that'll make y'all argue. Yeah, you don't put yourself in that situation. And I, when I'm falling in love and I'm like, I ain't in the streets, I'm in the church. Y'all, I'm, in, I'm in this situation. Y'all listen to me, this man literally, when we started dating, he would go to like hang places with his, his business guy friends and, yeah. Um, no strip clubs or nothing no, like that, no, but it would be no. like a place, you know, where it was more loud and, uh, and you quit all that. You were like, I can't, I can't be in these places because now I'm with you. Yeah. That's how you know somebody's in love yeah. is you're willing to change you, right. change the way you do things right. for each other. Right. That's how you know you're in love. Yeah. You can't post silly stuff. You can't do certain stuff. It's like, and then eventually- when when are we past that we should be past that we should you know we, like now it's just part of us yeah 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 catch me in the gym yeah <laughs> i love that yeah okay so let's take another question another question is why is it so difficult to find love after 50s and 60s i think it should be much easier i do too because you're not 20 you're not 30 you're not you're not 40. finding yourself you shouldn't be yeah you stay. If you are, you need to be in my master class. <laughs> you you stable. I yeah. mean, at 
maybe at 20, 20 or 30, you probably didn't have a passport. At 50 and 60, you got a passport. You should be able to go anywhere in the world. <laughs> now, baby, here's what I think. I think one yeah. of the reasons it's hard to find love at 50s and 60s, and y'all leave in the comments some right. of your thoughts, is because we almost give up. It's almost like we feel like I'm too old now. Like a woman starts walking through menopause and uh, we start our, our fogging and feeling. And if and when you don't, when you've been single for so long and you don't know, you, it's almost like you've given up. Like I encourage, like right now, babe, we've got a connect group at Limitless Church that on Wednesday nights at seven o'clock, you can, you can jump in on it. You just go to limitlesschurch.live and, and get in that connect group. And baby, in that connect group, I have our singles in our church downloaded an app, a dating app on their phone. Cause I was going to do a dating app and my lawyers were like, nah, if somebody gets a divorce, they're going to be raking your name through the coal cause right. you connected them, which made sense. So now I've got a connect group. I got a connect connect group that uh, on Wednesday nights, they come in there and talk about the people they're talking to on that dating app. And so the friends are uh, coming together and helping each other. So y'all, you've got to put yourself out there. I think another thing too, baby, is All low right. confidence. Low confidence at 50s and 60s. Well, menopause, man pause, it doesn't matter. Do, <laughs> do, do you want to go to the movies? Yeah. Do you want to go get a cup of tea, a uh, cup of coffee? Yeah. That's all. So if you're yeah. so if you're in your fifties or sixties yeah. and it's, you're single, you got to get yourself out there. Yeah, you cannot sit at home thinking someone is going to break into the house to get you. Yeah, y'all, maybe you need to do update yourself. Maybe you've had the same hairstyle for forty years. Yeah, maybe you are wearing uh, men looking clothes. Maybe maybe you are maybe you quit. Maybe you quit on yourself, and maybe now you're saying I don't want no man. Y'all, when I tell you. When I started reinventing myself, I started finding my soft girl era, which I found because of him. I became, I became approachable. God brought you to me right. and me to you. And so work on your confidence. How do you work on your confidence? You read books, get into my RTK inner circle, get into a masterclass, go to a therapist. Cause maybe just maybe the reason why you're single is because you are bleeding on people that didn't cut you because somebody walked out on you and there ain't nothing in this world having to start all over again. After you've been married for a long time and now you're it's scary. Do you remember when you got divorced? Yeah, I do. I Wasn't it scary? I remember the day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like when you were literally packing your stuff yeah. Yeah. and starting your life alone. Right. What did you do as a man? I was feeling like trying to find yourself. Like, yeah. What are you going to do? What you used to do, you know? Um, you know, and then you, like you say, when you got kids involved, it's very serious. You know? Yeah. Who's putting them to sleep? Are you going to be able to, you know? And that's, a, that's, that's tough. Yeah. Yeah. So it's really working on that, man. It's yeah. talking to yourself. Like for me, when I walked through my divorce, man, I went through a divorce in front of the world eight years ago. And I remember when I walked through that, Angelo, I was just like, man, I'm never getting married again. Mm -hmm. I was, I never wanted to even think of marriage again because I was like, dog, this is, I'm, I suck at this. Like right. I suck at this relationship thing. I've been married now and my problem ain't getting a man. It's keeping them. And instead of after about a year, because I think a lot of times, Angelo, when we say, mm -hmm. I don't want no man or I don't want no woman, it's because we are afraid of being hurt again. So we're, that's, our, that's our defense. It's our mechanism. And for me, I remember about, man, two years ago, mm -hmm. we were coming out of the pandemic and I'd been divorced for like four years. And I remember I was watching a love story. And it was the sweetest connection of a man and a woman. And I remember for the first time, Angelo, mm -hmm. I literally was like, man, I want that. Right. And so I started working. I started laying hands on myself every night saying, Lord, make me a wife in my heart. Wow. Like, let me let all those walls, if there's anything inside of me that is repulsive or, uh, or argumentative or uh, uh, don't want to submit, fix that in me. Right. And I started praying that. I started praying for my confidence. I really did, babe, because when you've been single for a while, you'll start feeling like you ain't lovable. You'll start feeling like you ain't desirable. I don't think that, you know, most, I think people do want to get out and, and want to find a relationship, but you can't listen to other people. 
you know, like uh, uh, none of these guys is, they're not worth anything. Guys verse, vice versa say the same thing. These women, man, they hard, it's, it's different out here now in these streets and stuff. No, all you have to do is, is stop looking out of, stop looking out of the window and look in the mirror. Yeah. Cause when you look at yourself in the mirror, you the person. Mm -hmm. You know what you want as a person. Don't worry about your friends that they can't find a person. You got to deal with you. So just look in, just look in the mirror. And you got to ask yourself stuff about you. Yeah. Like when you go on a date, like I know people that are a lot of, uh, uh, man, you're like a serial first dater. Yeah. You never get asked on a second date. And I think a lot of times it's because you walk into these relationships and you put all your rules out on that first date. On that second date, you're already telling them, we're not going to do this. We're not going to do that. This is what I, this is what I want. You're putting all of these rules out on this man that you've never even let him get to know you. Yeah. Like you got to go out on a date, get dressed up, be cute, be fun. Don't be talking about what you won't do and what you going to do and what you require in a man or a woman. And for the first few dates, go out and just have fun. Go top golf, go walking on a trail, go to a gym together, just do something. And then when y'all get more serious, then you're, you're, you're starting to already fall for them. So now you're not going to deliver it in such a, right? Yeah. And, and you know, my thing is when I moved here from Atlanta, I was married, divorced. Then I was in a long relationship with someone and thought well, we would have got married. And, but when I came here, I dated myself. Come on. I dated myself. As a guy, you still need to date yourself. What'd that look like? Yeah. It was about three, four years dating myself. Really? Getting myself, getting my strength back, get my mind right. Come on, man. Got my finance right. Got my credit right. Come on. Yeah. If you can't do you, how you gonna do someone else? It ain't and gonna focus. It ain't gonna work because you can't shake me. You can't break me. And I could yeah. tell, man, when we came yeah. into this relationship, I could yeah. really tell that you worked on me. Oh, yeah. I will make a millionaires when I get in a room and make them feel like they are worthless. Because the only thing you got is money. What else you got? Yeah. You ain't got nothing. What else you got? You got nothing. Yeah. Yeah. But you got, once you know yourself. Yeah. How would you tell somebody to, to get to that place? Like if they're like, man, load, that's where I'm at right now. Like yeah. I am starting all over and I'm devastated and I'm, my finances are crazy because of the divorce or, or I, I got taken, uh, I, I support, I thought this person was going to uh, step up and they end up playing video games every day. What would you tell this person now that's saying, I need to date myself? Yeah, especially for guys. I mean, I can speak to a guy because guess what? You can't. You, you can't get her name. You got to give her your name. And your dad gave you, if he didn't have it, he didn't, and if you, if you didn't get a silver spoon, if he, didn't, if he didn't give you no money, the only thing you got is his name. The only thing my dad gave me, I'm my dad kid, and he gave me his name, and I'm going to make sure it's going to be worth it, all the money. So when you want to give someone your name, make sure you're doing everything to get yourself back up here. Man, that is a whole sermon. Yeah. Make sure your last name is worth having. Worth having. Man. Yeah. So if you want my last name. Make sure. It's, it's worth having. It is. Yeah. And, and you yeah. told me that. It's worth having. You told yeah. me. I, us sitting apart yeah. like this, I can't be touching on you and stuff. Yeah. When we were sitting on the couch, yeah. I could snuggle up to you. Yeah. But, but now we've been all professional. Yeah. We still... <laughs> We still love her, but business is business. Uh -huh. Yeah, we're talking business. So, so, you know. I, so I love that. Basically, yeah. what you were saying, babe, is you're talking to the man. Yeah. And I'm talking to the woman right. now. Make sure that you are not sabotaging incredible relationships because you've got your desire so up here that you are going to miss out on a great person that God has brought into your life because they're more simple. Make sure that you're not just getting in a relationship by his coins. Make sure that you're not just getting in a relationship with this man because of his abs. Make sure that you're not just getting in a relationship with this person because of what they have on social media. Make sure that when you're falling in love, that you are worth that man giving you his name to. Make sure that you are worth 
getting that man's last name because uh, the man worth having, he's going to come into the picture with a good last name. We got one of these questions, a uh, baby that said, uh, I've been in a long distance relationship and, uh, we've been in a long distance relationship for eight months. And, um, how do you deal with a man who looks at pictures of women online who are practically naked and provocative poses? It makes me feel very uncomfortable and insecure. I have talked to him about it. Do I just accept that men are men? Wow. Did he own only fan or he own Playboy? <laughs> I don't. I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know how to answer that question. That's his job. No. Oh, is he a photo? Is he no. a photographer? No. I mean, I don't, He's basically it, saying that she watches him. So when, when you have to watch your man like that, number one, you already yeah. know that you shouldn't be in a relationship with him. Like if you are going behind your man on social media and looking at his activity, you already know you should not be in that relationship. It may mean this man ain't never done nothing wrong. Even he might be a great man, but because you never healed, now you are thinking he's like every other man that cheated on you. So for me, she's saying, baby, that she's in a relationship with a person and it's long distance. And she notices that he, now I do say this too. You can look at a man's profile and his friends list and see what kind of man he is. If it's all right. half naked women, he's a player, right? right? But she's saying that he's online liking half naked pictures. My question to you is, would you ever go through a, a woman's, a single woman's pay, or married and like their pictures if they're half naked? No, no, it wasn't, you know. Did I, you even do that before me? No, I never, I never did that. And I had a lot of, of, a lot of clients and stuff that whatever their profession was that I would do business with, but it's only business. So if he's doing this, if it's not business, I can't really see why would you want to be in a relationship? Come on. Why, why would you want this relationship? Because you already don't trust yeah, him. Yeah. And, and if he, and if she flipped that. What if she did it? How would he feel about Come it? Come on. How would she feel? That she, I always yeah. think like that, baby. I yeah. always think about, because you and I've had a few right. times where you're like, why would you do that? Like, yeah. I'm, I'm standing right here and I'm like, well, I'm, you know, it's just I'm a pastor. And you're like, no, this makes me feel this way. I will never do it again. But I don't even know that this is worth even having a conversation with this yeah, person. Yeah, yeah. Because this is who he is. And not all men are that way. I'm telling you something. When you are dating someone, this is for dating. When you are dating someone and they are looking at, uh, it, it would crush me if I saw Angelo looking at half-naked women. Does he look at you like, did he look at you like he look at these people? Well, they're dating. Oh. And obviously he loved her or he wouldn't have got, or, or liked her. Well, this is, but he, this is his problem. Yeah, it's a, like you're getting into a relationship with somebody while you're dating that ain't even faithful to you right now right. because baby getting married to them is not going to change their ways. This is not you getting married to this man or care, keep continuing a relationship with this man is not going to make this man stop liking half naked women. Yeah. And so for the rest of your life, you're going to be embarrassed because this man is going to keep liking. And I'm a woman when a man that is married. It, Look at me. It, it, I'm just like, you dog, because I don't want no man. I wouldn't want my man doing that to me. And so he's a dog. And so you need to not date him. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I would not even carry on another day with him. That if I've been dating somebody for eight months, long distance. Long distance. Man. Long distance. So what you go do when you do get together and you see someone, you think he's going to stare a glance. He's going to zoom in like he got monopoly you know <laughs> this is what you get. because the fact of the matter is y'all we all look at pretty people yeah but is he just gonna stare is yeah. he you gonna catch him looking all the time i would never be in a relationship yes. like that like it's a non-negotiable for me yeah, well, like y'all there's there's men out there with foot fetishes yeah, what they do that at they do they there do? are men that pay money yeah. for to watch people with feet and they even even have pantyhose I, like they pay big bucks for this. They, they are like, all you got to do is go on. No, you can't. women paying it too. <laughs> Should I no. take my shoe? Oh. <laughs> Angela, go get him all it. No, you ain't. No, you ain't. You all mine. I take these J out. Uh, <laughs> uh -huh. you, no, you ain't either. I take these shoes but off. I would yeah. not. I, me and Angela yeah. going to tell you this. Yeah. I would not be in a relationship with somebody that I didn't trust. Yeah. I just wouldn't. And even if even if I haven't healed from a relationship before and I, I feel 
like because he puts his phone down. Like I, I just like yeah. like this man leaves his phone all over the place. Oh yeah. I've been I got divorced because of infidelity. I had a problem with that. Like I had a problem with, you know, and, and I and I really feel like like it, like my husband's all cheated. Like you know, like flirted with my friends and. I had to really work on myself, like Angelo said. I had to date myself and ask myself, why do I keep getting these men that that make me feel unworthy and unwanted? Because you got to look at other women because I'm not enough. And I knew and saw all the red flags before I married them. And so you need to park. You need to park your car, work on you, and ask yourself why you keep me getting men, same men with different, the same spirit with different faces. And I wouldn't date him. Yeah, I don't know. I wouldn't date him. I wouldn't date no man that is liking half naked pictures, especially if I'm dating him. Now, if you're married to somebody and they got a porn problem or they got a, y'all need to go to therapy. Yeah. yeah. Like you, you don't just throw your marriage away because of that. And we doing this in our forties and fifties, or even at thirties. I mean, who does this? I mean, who, who really, I mean. So there are good men left. Yeah. Yeah. See, find you somebody else. Find you somebody else. Find you somebody else. And yeah. I know it's going to hurt, but I would rather cry for right. three months. And he's long distance. Yeah. Right. Leave him there. Leave him there and yeah. let God bring, because God yeah. can't bring you the right one as long as you keep holding on to the wrong one. Yeah. Y'all, we're going to go to a break and we will be right back. Happy love day. We'll be right back. <laughs> Everybody and welcome back to me and Lo, yes. my sweet man that God blessed me with this year. I love you, baby. I love you too. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> Did you say Valentine's? Valen, because you're my Valentine. <laughs> All the time. I love yeah. that. It's like a song. My, uh -huh. val my Valentine. So we got, what is your, what is our love song? Uh, we have a couple. What are they? Beauty. Beauty. True Hill. True Hill. We got, you know. Tamia. Tamia. We got some Greg Reporter. Uh, Greg Reporter. We got a lot of his song. Take and y'all, to, to go back to that question we had in one of these podcasts where, what do we do because I'm a preacher? We go to a Greg Reporter concert. Yes. We went to Chris Cross concert. We yeah. go to concerts. Yeah. Yeah. Because people, you know, when they ask me like, man, you dating, you dating a preacher? How, how is it? What do they say? I like, just like your mom and your dad, ain't they preachers? <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, you know, really, it's, it's really like, we're normal, yeah, me and you. Yeah. Like we're really normal. We're uh, we we go out to eat. You're not gonna find us drunk in a bar. Yeah. Um, but who does that anyway when you're in a relationship? Yeah. Yeah. But I didn't even think about that. Yeah, I had someone ask me that. You know, dating a preacher. You know, and I'm like, your dad is a bishop with five church. I know, but what what, what about me. that person that their parent isn't a preacher? And they're like, you're dating a preacher. Yeah. They probably think I'm like, yeah. all the time. We're praying all the time. <laughs> well, you know, when people ask you something, they really don't know you. They don't know how you grow it up. Yeah. Yeah. You, 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 didn't, you, you never saw me at the script club. Yeah. Yeah. You didn't see me running with a bunch of people. Nope. Yeah. You didn't see me hanging with a bunch of people. I love that. I'm so thankful. But people that people that really that know me, been knowing me for over 30 years, they were like, wow, we, everything you do, we not surprised. This oh, is your lane. So if yeah. I'm sitting up here talking to here and we are in this podcast, someone just sent me that, my friends in California, she say, oh, I saw the last um, podcast. She say, that's your lane. Yeah. I already know it. Because you don't you mind you don't you don't mind talking to people you don't mind helping someone giving them a good word giving them some information and to build people up that's why I say if you're gonna get a man get a man to empower you don't get a man yeah. to give you money because yeah, you're gonna keep asking for money mm. but if you but if not, he give you, you empowerment mm -hmm. empowerment means that he gave you that power that you could start wealth. You really did that for me. You know, we got engaged uh, on New Year's Eve, right. New Year's Eve at uh, church. As soon as I came off the platform, you were down on your knee and my sons were there and my mother and some of my staff. And it was so special. Um, and you are literally the best pusher. Like I remember even when my book was coming out, uh, I was scared. I was like, man, what if it flops? What if it doesn't do good? And you were like, baby, 
even if it don't do good, if just one person gets free, yeah. like I just, it, you are everything I didn't know I needed. And I got it this year. And I'm so thankful that on this Valentine's Day, we get to make our first Valentine's Day memories. Yeah, yeah, we can definitely we get give, to love. give a shout out to your publishers and everybody in uh, HarperCollins. Yeah. They did a good job. Mm -hmm. um, but I was just saying, I mean, man, your book don't define you. The reason why they came to you because who you are. Yeah. Yeah. So. It's so good because even on, on our vlogs and stuff with, you know, when people come at us or, you know, every so often we'll get a hater you're just like, they don't define us. Nah. Like, like I just love that about you. So y'all make sure that if you're out there and you're praying for God to bring you somebody, you know, make sure that you look in that mirror, like Angelo said, look in that mirror and start with the man in the mirror. When I tell you, you cannot change a person. Mm -hmm. The only time you can change a person is their diapers. Mm -hmm. Like that is the only, when they're a baby. Yeah. Like when you get into a relationship, I believe God shows you red flags. Like every single relationship that I got into before him, I did not pray about that relationship. I was just ready to get married and have kids. And I just wanted a man. And that's where the enemy came to still kill and destroy in my life was I kept getting men that were not fitting for my life and for my destiny. And so just make sure that, you know, we are proof that at 51 and in his 50s, he didn't like me to tell his age. <laughs> Forever young age, forever young age. That's my make age. Make sure, but he's in his fifties. Forever, forever young. But make sure that you are uh, getting into a healthy relationship. That you aren't bringing old baggage into that relationship. And we're proof yeah. that at any age, God can bring true love. I think we still got at least thirty years that we can be married. Oh yes, we're gonna be. You're still still in the gym or whatever, doing our thing. Uh -huh. And if you're bringing some baggage. Let somebody know what you're bringing. Yeah. Tell them what you got. So even if they got baggage. Tell me. Because it, 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 it's something that that person can deal with. And it's something that they can probably wipe. Yeah. They can help you. Yeah. They can get rid of it. They can help you. Because it's because that's what you did to me. It's information. You came in and helped me unpack some stuff I didn't yeah. even know I had. It's some information. And vice versa. Yeah. 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 I love that. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming on the podcast. Oh, man. Glad to be here. I hope you'll have me again. Oh, what? How about next week? You okay. want to go out next week? I'll check, I'm going to check my schedule. <laughs> <laughs> you want to go on a date with me next week? Of course. Ah, one of your, one we'll of be our, right back one here. One of our favorite restaurants. Uh-huh. We're going to meet right back here oh. for another podcast next week. Because uh -oh. we're giving people hope okay. for love. Well, how can they find us? They can find us by going to realtalkkim.com. You can find us. You can find him on my social media pages. I am Real Talk Kim all over the web yeah. every Monday through Friday. I'm on live at, with prayer at 9 a.m. I've got the RTK Inner Circle, which is my mentorship program that you can join. You can also be a part of my master classes. All of this you can find or my masterminds. This is a new program I just launched and it is one on one, one on one coaching for one year. And all of this you can find at realtalkkim.com. I even have a store with incredible, fun clothes. I just dropped a new product that says, God don't shirt. This is God don't play about me. And as y'all know, he wears a lot of my stuff, but I wear a lot of my stuff. Man. And you can find that at realtalkkim.com as well. And if you're in Atlanta, we invite you to come to Limitless yeah. every Sunday, 10 and 1130, 1653, Highway 85 South, Fayetteville, Georgia, 30215, across from Whitewater High School. <laughs> wow. Uh huh. I love you, baby. Yeah. See you guys soon. Yes. Thank you for sharing this. And yes. we love you. Bye-bye. Yay Networks.